Hey everyone, if you're human like me, there's probably some things that you've done in the past that when you look back upon them, you're just filled with immense cringe maybe and you just think, what was I thinking when I did this certain thing? I have it and one of the cases where I have it is when I look at the old videos on this channel and more specifically, there's a video about game designs. I think it's the second video we ever made and I hate it. But you guys apparently loved it because I think it's like one of our most viewed videos, but I've always not been happy with that video really. Recording it was a mess. I don't like how it was structured. I mean, it was the second video I ever made. I had no clue what I was doing. By now I know how to just talk to you guys more in a normal way. Back then I had like line for line, everything scripted and I had like papers. You can see it in the video still even. But despite like how the quality was really low of that video and how there was no real structure in it, a lot of people still watched it. And I feel like I did them a disservice. I feel like there were so many better things I could have told them about game design documents that I just didn't. So this is the start of my redemption arc. In this video, I'm going to go over what are one page game design documents because there's this whole concept of you need to have a big game design document and then there's other indies who are like game design documents are useless i'll probably dive into that in a future video this one i want to make more actionable more follow along with you you actually want to stick around because this video is not just me talking but i will actually be walking you through how I make a game design document for a game as well. You can download the template as well in the description and follow along. So stay tuned for that. Before we jump into the actual game design document making over, I want to spend a few minutes at least on what is a game design document again. Game design documents, they serve as your guiding light, your northern star for when you're designing a game or when you're working on a game. So this is one of the first documents that you make when you have a new game concept. So it could be that you're planning a new awesome FPS with some cool time travel mechanics, or you're planning a resource management and automation game like we are doing Forge Industry. You'll probably want a game design document. And that is just because you are working on a game most likely for more than a week and most likely with not just yourself, in which case you need to be able to successfully translate your vision of how you see the game as the game designer to the rest of the team. Game design documents serve to put everyone on the same page and to provide something that half a year down the line you can look back and be like, what was I thinking here again? What was this certain mechanic we wanted to implement? For example, we had for Forge Industry, there was in our first game design document, instead of our research system that we have now, you were going to hire consultants from like different countries who would teach you their weapons. And we never really approached that research aspect until we were like nine months down the line. So that's when we could go back to what I originally wrote in that first game design document and be like, okay, in our current implementation, how do we want to do this? Actually, we think this idea is pretty dumb. Let's just scrap it and rework it. Or maybe it could have been good and we just had to read what the game design document said and implement it. Now, why are they so contested? Well, you can spend and not just spend, you can waste a lot of time working on game design documents because they can also just never be used or immediately become outdated. You can't just have a game design document that you've wait once at the very early start of your game and then just ignored it, started working and not done anything else on it. No, you need to actively keep updating it, keep changing it. And that's something that not a lot of people have the time for. And if you can't do that, it's just a waste of time because there's no point in writing tens or even hundreds of pages in some cases. What I do want you to do, no matter what your stance is on game design documents, is follow this and make a one page game design document. This is really more also just your, your pitch document, even just to give it to the rest of the team. If you have a game idea and it covers the most core things. It has things like an executive pitch. It's like, okay, these are the high level things. So this pricing that I want to do. These are the platforms I want to do. I want to release it then. These are the selling proposals and things like that. Don't worry if these names don't make full sense. We're going to jump over to that document in just a second and I'll walk you through all of them. As I said, you can download the document down below or you can just like make your own stylized document that's a bit prettier. Just make sure that you have the same titles basically as I'm going to talk about in a second. So let's go over to my computer. So we're on our computer now. If you've opened the document, you can open it normally in a browser as well. I just have Acrobat because I need to work with PDF files a lot. And as you can see, there's this whole bunch of fields and I'm gonna be walking you through all of them and the reasoning behind them. And hopefully you learn something new. 
First thing we do up here is we want to give the name of our game, in which case I'm just going to make a game design document for Forge Industry because that's the game I'm most familiar with. Um, but there are a few others that I've made um, with this template. So I have used this myself a bit. It's a variation of some you can find online as well, but this is what worked best for me. And then we have here on the right, we have our fact sheet is what I call it. And this is the, the at a glance information. If you only have two seconds to look at this pitch, What's important? What are the platforms we're supporting it on? So is that Steam? Are we going for consoles? Things like that. What's the price? How much do you expect to make from this? Or how much are you expecting to charge at least? How long do you think players are going to be playing your game on average? Now for Forge Industry, this is less of a thing, but especially if you're making like a linear game or a story driven game, something that has a set end time, we can be, we have infinite replayability. So it's a bit harder, but you would put that in the playtime field. Age rating, this serves also as an, a reminder of how gory, how over the top, how brutal is our game gonna be. If I'm making a shooter game and it's rated E for everyone, well, you already know it's gonna be some cartoon one with not a lot of actual like gore. Whereas if you have a shooter game that's like rated 18 plus, you know that, oh man, we're gonna have limbs that are flying off from people when they get shot and things like that. And then when are you planning on releasing? Now, when are you planning on releasing? I've told this before, your planning will suck, but give a estimate, just whatever, and usually be like, okay, second half of this year or this quarter in this year, or maybe a month, but don't be more specific. Don't be like, I know now when I'm first writing this document that we will be releasing exactly the 30th of June, 2023. There's no way you know that. We had that problem as well, as you may have noticed. So let's fill this out now for Forge Industry. Our platforms are simple, we're releasing only on PC and we will be releasing for both Mac and Windows. Our price, we've set this at $15.99 uh, using euros because we are in Europe or if you want, you can add like a second. Uh, we are going for $16.99 US. So that also you have an idea of what's the price. For our playtime, I would realistically go for something like, if I had to say how many hours will a player be able to, an average player, not someone who's like hardcore, I'm pretty sure 20 to 40 hours is doable in our game at least. So let's put that one in here as well. And our age rating is really for everyone. So we're going to make it everyone. And when is our planned release? Well, of course, we know our planned release date. If you don't know yet, it's next week when this video airs. But some, you would then write something such as Q3. 2023. We have some games that we're working on that we're like, oh, maybe second half 2024 that just depends this is because we're really close to our release here that it's a bit more i know the things i'm going to talk about and that's just our short little fact sheet so now we have already the base information of our game now we can actually start with the most important thing i think and that's the executive pitch that's how i call it that's basically if someone asks you oh you're making a game cool what are you working on this is the answer you give them so this is your elevator pitch, your executive pitch, call it what you want, your, your like short capsule info. This is your game summarized in two to three sentences. I got my pitch. Basically it's three sentences. First sentence is what's the genre, resource automation and management. Second sentence is what are you actually doing as the player? What is the game for you going to look like or well feel like? And then three in our case is what makes us unique? Why are we special? Why should you play us compared to any of the competition? Why not go for Factory Town, go for Satisfactory, go for Factorio, things like that? Oh, why? Well, we have no conveyor belts. And that's a pretty short and sweet pitch. It explains everything that there is to know on a high level of what kind of game are you making? If you tell someone this, they usually know what you're doing. And now next up, depending on what kind of game you want to make, you could even switch these two up, your mechanics and your story. Our story is we don't really have a story. So that one is quite easy. I'll get into that in a second. But our mechanics are really important. And these are more your internal documentation. So this is more explaining to your developers what are the core principles? What do we really need to have figured out correctly? So for us, that would be things like our item system, because you can make any kind of item using different materials that can interact with each other. Another mechanic, of course, as we said in our executive pitch, is our pot finding workers. So we have no conveyor belts, but instead we need to have a solid route system where you have to be like, okay, I want to go from point A to point B to point C, and it needs to be handled in a correct way. Some other mechanics could be 
our supply and demand calculation. So in the marketplace, there's actually a much bigger behind the scenes framework going on that is calculating what are the different buy and sell prices, changing them every day. It's simulating internal trading between all of the other factions around you. Or another mechanic could be that you have um, dynamic world events where sometimes because of forest fires, for example, the pricing goes up and down. It's a bit different than the, the dynamic market still because this is from like a world event. So you're simulating a world. Those are some of our example mechanics. So once again, I'm gonna put them in and then we can hop over to story. Okay, so next up we have our story. Now, you may be making a game that doesn't really have a story. Great, because I actually recommend that usually unless you have made previous games, don't make your first game too narrative focused because generally, that's an extra load you're adding, especially if you have some mechanics as well. So you don't want to overdo it in one game. But we still have a story, so to say. And with our story, we talk about basically anything that shows the player that there's more of a world. So maybe we don't have this very convoluted plot points. In this case, we have things like, as I said before, we have those world events that make the world feel more alive. And we also have different world factions, so different species. So for example, we have dwarves around you, we have elves, we have humans, and they all still interact. And even though it's not a direct story that you're being told, it still gives the world more of a feeling of being alive. And that also counts as a narrative experience in my case. So here you would basically put down anything that has to do with the player learning more about the world that he's in. If you have an actual narrative, just put a Cliff Notes version in here, works perfectly fine as well. You don't need to fully explain it. There's a reason that the story is somewhat short. You don't wanna dump your whole story on someone the first time you wanna introduce your game to them. No, you wanna give them some time, talk about it high level, and then later on, as you're working on the game, you would have separate documents that describe how your story should go. As I said, in our case, story here is our world factions that you interact with, and you can still they will have different wars with each other in different playthroughs, which will influence the different kinds of weapons that you have to make as well in every playthrough. Okay, so we're already over halfway really. So this is the thing, this is really easy and quick to make. Our next two things are USPs, our unique selling points and our objectives. These are more marketing focused already. So what you would use on your store page instead of just what you would describe internally. This is if you were to go to a publisher as well to pitch your idea, you would need to give them your USBs. You would need to tell them more about these things as well. And this is what really showcases to the player. This is what I can do. So a lot of these things you'll see are a bit similar to mechanics. However, as I said, mechanics are more for the internal documentation. So more of what are we as the developers going to work on? Whereas USPs are more of, okay, what is going to hook the player? into actually purchasing our game and playing our game. What makes us unique there? And I think the best way to showcase this is actually by going to our own Steam page. And if we scroll down here, we actually have multiple unique selling points. So for example, here are four distinct environments. That's a selling point that makes us unique. Or our automation options, or our dynamic events, or the rich and immersive learning experience because we have real world swords and other weapons that we try to teach you as the player a bit more about. These are your unique selling points. This is what makes you special. And as you can see, you put these on your sales page as well. Another way that I usually think about it is if you remember back in the old days, you bought physical game boxes. Usually at the back, you had like a few bullet points as well of why is the game so awesome? Maybe because it had 64 player multiplayer, for example, already talked about how many different items there were, things like that. That's your unique selling point. And you wanna make sure you know them for your game as well. Now I know them, so I'm just gonna copy paste these basically. And that leaves us to the last thing and is our objectives. The best way to explain this is they get hooked by the USPs, but that's not the reason they play. Once they have purchased the game and they've gotten an hour in, that's when the objectives needs to show. That's when you need to know this is my end goal. This is when I would see the game as complete. So in Breath of the Wild, that would be, for example, in the beginning, you don't know what the, the big bad evil is. Only once you've completed the small tutorial and you talk to the old king, you can see that, oh, Ganon has taken over the castle. I need to defeat Ganon. That's my objective. And in the meantime, you can go to the Divine Beast. That's an other objective. We actually had problems with this at first in our game because, you know, what's the objective? But in a Factorio, for example, it's launch a rocket. 
because you don't play factorial only to optimize. Of course, it's a very big part, but the optimization has you serve a goal and that is to be able to craft that rocket. And for us, that is to marry one or more princes and princesses. So you have to hone your skills as working with different materials and working with really fine, precise things as well. Become a jewelry, make the ultimate ring and then send that off and hope that whoever is your love interest has interest in you and wants to marry you. That's an objective. So that could be save the world, save the princess or marry the princess. It can be very simple, stereotypical things. And you can also have sub objectives depending on what kind of game you're making. If you have a narrative game, there's probably going to be multiple objectives. Or if there's a puzzle game, you could also say that there are multiple objectives instead of just solve the puzzles. There's usually a reason behind these things as well. But why you need these objectives is because if you don't know where you're going to in the end, when you haven't even started, you, you have this feeling of loss when you start developing your game where you don't really know yet to what ends you're making the game. And you need to know that because we had that problem. We didn't know what we were going towards, what we were working to. And that made us feel like, you know, is this game really gonna be more than just a tech demo? If you don't have an objective, that's what you are, a tech demo, just showcasing some cool mechanic that you've made. So think about that objective. In our case, it's learn all the materials so you can make the best ring, so you can marry the princess and everyone can be happy. And then one last thing I have down here is you need some supplemental art. So that could be concept art that you've made or could be pictures of other games that have a similar style, just to showcase where do you wanna to go to. So for example, in our case, it would be screenshots of maybe a factory town, which is what inspired us a bit for our graphical style. Or it could be, you know, more of our concept art that we had for promotional material that you have in our Steam page and things like that. Just so that, because this is a lot of text and the moment you have like one picture of this is how I want my game to look just from another game, it's a lot easier for whoever's reading this document to be like, aha, I understand what you're meaning. So I hope this taught you a bit more, go ahead, download it down below, give it a spin for your own, or maybe you have already made your own game design document, a one pager, for example. In which case, great. I'm curious, what did you talk about? Are you talking about the same things as I am? Have you left out certain parts? Have you added parts that maybe I don't have in here? This is, in my opinion, what we, what works best for us. But maybe you're like, actually, this is not really applicable for me. I think this one that I've made before was much better. I love to interact with you guys. You guys were really interactive with us in the last video. So thanks for that. I love to just hear about your opinions because with that discourse, we learn new things as well as game developers. If you're new around here, we're a game development studio working on Forge Industry. Well, we're almost done with it now. One week from when this video goes up, the game launches. So if Forge Industry is something that interests you, go ahead and click the link down below to go and wishlist it. Apart from that, we do also make other content. For example, these kinds of tutorials, we talk about more high level game design topics. We're gonna add more technical tutorials as well. And we just vlog, for example, when you go to networking events, award shows, conferences, things like that. So be sure if you're interested in that to subscribe as well as it really helps us out. And you get this cool content twice a week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.